And in today's spotlight, the Supermarket Association will it heed the call of the Ministry of Social Development to not cash those welfare checks February and March. Let's welcome the president of the Supermarket Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Rajiv Dipti. Good morning to you, Rajiv. Good morning, Natalie, and good morning to the now morning show team. Good morning to Rokas. I'm sure I would have loved to hear what's continuing to irk him this morning as much as these checks <laughs> And the list is. <laughs> oh, listen, you don't want to know who is irking him at all. But I'm sure we can get to the issue. So, Rajiv, what's the Supermarkets Association on, you know, the ministry's call not to cash these checks? Well, we have to heed the call, Natalie. There's no two ways about that. Those checks, as they announced, uh, we have to not accept it. So what happens is that where these social welfare checks are concerned, there's pension checks, disability grants, and the food card checks. And all of these are different checks that are presented to you by your customers for redemption. Uh, typically, supermarkets and banks would be the places for these persons who receive these checks to visit to redeem. Uh, what you have now is a situation where they have put out a, a, a press release and they have advised all persons with immediate effect to go to the banks to redeem those checks. Uh, so what these supermarkets would have acted as in the past is a bank for the unbanked because you have a lot of people, I think it's over 50%, I think you have about 56% of those checks uh, going to persons who don't have a bank account. So when they come into the stores, for example, they would take, if it's a $2,000 check, they would probably take $500, um, be it $1,000, $500 worth of groceries, and then they redeem the balance for cash. And we would take the checks and deposit them from our side. And that's how the system has generally worked for a number of years. So where the Ministry of Social Development would have dealt with this incident of fraud, uh, further to the break in at TT Post with the checks that would have been stolen. And then leading into the announcement of the press release. And then further to that, what we would have seen yesterday were the implications for supermarkets and pensioners and the recipients of the cards intended for social welfare. That has created situations not altogether. Mm -hmm. Uh, in keeping with the objectives because it has actually run into an exercise that is more laborious, more uh, onerous to the persons receiving the checks and created a certain amount of confusion between the banks and the supermarkets. Because you have to remember, we're operating within cycles of business. So there are always lags in accounting cycles and periods where we have to take into account and establish cutoff points, and this was not properly uh, communicated from the ministry to the central bank, to the respective bankers, and it's really thrown up a lot for our traditional customers. Remember, in the supermarket business, in the community supermarket, let's take that as an example. It's a case of know your customers. I would yeah. be familiar with the pensioners in my area who come in every month uh, to redeem the checks. Now, I have to tell that person, sorry, I can't take your check because of an uh, isolated incident in Sangre Grande. We put out a nationwide blockade on all social welfare checks. Now, But I do you agree with the blockade? Do you agree with the, the nationwide blockade? I, I have to say I don't, Natalie, because we know we've published, we've seen the list of the published numbers of the serials where the checks are concerned. So from that side of things, we can put a stop order, at least the banks, the central bank can put a stop order on those checks. And if you know that, uh, you know, it, you, you, you have control over the system to an extent because it's a real, real, it's a real inconvenience. Look, last week we saw one of the persons, uh, I think it was an elderly person, I believe it was on the front page of one of, of, one of the dailies. And that person went to the bank and um, the banks, first of all, are not equipped uh, with the physical infrastructure, the space to deal with the volume of persons going there with these checks, as well as they have more stringent COVID-19 guidelines than uh, some of these stores. And, you know, that person passed out and they were frotting at the mouth. And, and this is something that where we deal with older people in particular, it's really about the convenience to them because they want their groceries. We've heard 
uh, some of the incidents. Now, legislatively speaking, the supermarkets and the banks are the point of redemptions for these intended checks. However, we're hearing about other places uh, that have been changing these checks, which is illegal. Um, so, you know, we're clamping down. I understand that the ministry wants to clamp down on a culture of fraud, but we have to remember that the fraud is endemic and has a genesis. Uh, but but Rajiv, has, has, a, has, a ministry, uh, has the ministry given the reason why supermarkets aren't being allowed to cash a check since you see legislatively the banks oh, and the supermarkets can cash a check? So, so what they are saying is that these stolen checks are being encashed at supermarkets across the nation. Now, to an extent, I understand that because there, so first of all, let me put some things in perspective. The supermarket association doesn't include all supermarkets in Trinidad and Tobago. We have internal standards, best practice, and some stores do not adhere to that. So first of all, you're going to find that some of these stolen checks will find their way into stores. Um, and normally when a person comes with a check to redeem, you show a form of national ID and um, we match it up with the check, the name on the check, and literally that's the redemption mechanism some of the so which is why i go back to the point about know your customers because it's really about community supermarkets knowing your customers um when if a person from sangri grandi where the checks were stolen comes to me in south and i i realize he's a person who's out of area i'm not going to redeem the check that's a form of checks and balances um but the mechanism for fraud, Natalie, has gotten more sophisticated we've seen national id cards that look and feel like the real thing and um, that in itself is worrying because it, it, it gives us pause for thoughts about where the origination of fraud is taking place. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, we understand from that point of view why they would say, don't go to the supermarkets, go to the banks. But if you have the check numbers, which you have, then mm -hmm. you can place a stop order on those checks. Right. And so you think they should have exercised this method because if they know the numbers, maybe they don't know all the numbers. I mean, it's a significant amount of money. It's a significant amount of checks. Well, it was published last week by the Ministry of Social Development. So what we would have had now is cases of people coming into the supermarkets, picking up groceries, for example, coming to the cash register, and then we have to blank them and tell them to go to the banks. And it's not an ideal situation for someone who has a disability grant or a pension check or even a food card check, but uh, it's, it's not ideal. And if you, if you know that the fraud is taking place, we've pushed, we've tried to push the ministry to go to a place that is not on a checking system anymore. That is more of a, uh, a, a you know a digital form, but it's it's a process and it will take time and it will take a transition. But in the well intention of servicing people during a pandemic, who are very needy, Natalie, I think that they should yeah. be allowed to come into the stores to redeem these checks and not push them towards the bank because they go to the bank, they're coming right back to the store. But if not you only that. I mean. If you're suggesting to me, Rajiv, that about 50% of our people don't have those bank accounts and normally would use the supermarkets, do we know the fallout of, the, of what's happening with them? Yeah, you're asking some very good questions because, um, you know, while we urge people to open bank accounts, I, the last time I asked anyone, how easy is it to open a bank account? They, 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 they laugh because it's not. It's very hard to open a bank account these days. There's a, it's a lot of stringencies. Um, you know, so with regards to those people that come into the stores, they re we, as I said, we deal with the customers that we know. We try, we, we don't deal with anyone out of area, at least from the internal standards set by the association. We've actually pledged to work with the ministry on new checks and balances, but, you know, it's, it's something that they have to tighten up on their side as well, because the genesis of the, the fraud, the theft, it's not happening on our side, it happened on theirs. So it, it, the minister spoke about, you know, not cashing those checks of February and March. But if that's normally an issue where stolen checks are cashed at supermarket, what do we do to ensure that, as you said, checks and balances are in place 
so that you can continue the business, that people can, you know, get their checks and do their businesses as well and stay away from the fraud. You have to move everyone. So their ambition, Natalie, is to move everyone over to direct deposit. But that's in contrast to what I just mentioned about the ease of opening a bank account. It's not easy. Uh, they would need to make direct deposit more attractive to the customers. They would now need to get the banks involved to uh, ease the stringencies of opening accounts to make it more feasible to move everyone over to direct deposit. Uh, there's also new technologies in play that we can, you know, try to work with customers who have uh, smartphones and smartphone technologies, but, but where there are systems in play in Atlee that allow for the exploitation of fraud by people who want to take advantage of the system, that, that will always be happening as long as uh, each side doesn't get, um, tries to get it right. But what where our main focus here today is natalie is that we want to see the customers for whom these checks are intended as a point for social welfare receive uh the easiest access to the funds in the pandemic right now because the caseloads are still high uh where they're still coming to the stores either if it's go to the bank and then come back or if it's come to the store redeem and then go with your goods and groceries so certainly a system needs to be worked out that is more fluid than placing a stop order on all checks devil's advocate rajiv is the supermarket association doing anything to help those customers who they're familiar with those pensioners who they know would normally cash their checks who probably are not you know in possession of those checks or can't use them at the supermarket anything you all are doing to help them Yes, I can. So let me let me place something in perspective. When the Ministry of Social Development made this announcement, our own bankers reneged on the checks that we had already collected. So we got hit because the ministry literally bounced our checks. Right. So from that point of view, supermarkets took a hit. What some of our members are doing in their communities is that they are opening temporary charge accounts for some of our long-time people, because there's a lot of suffering, Natalie. It's a lot of people who depend on these checks. When, when these checks go to people, the intended recipients are always fence line people. So when they, you, when you know them and they come into the store and then they look at, at that that they have when they can't redeem these checks, uh, we've discussed it among some of our leading members to to place temporary charge accounts until they can uh, get the the. Um, you know the the facility back online and we're doing our best right now because it's it's not an ideal situation for them and it's not it's certainly not an ideal one for us right now yeah and as far as you're aware after march you all will be able to cash these checks again well we're hoping that they can correct this situation as i said they have the serial numbers they can work directly with the central bank and the respective bankers and we have very computerized frameworks now Natalie. so for me it's a no-brainer if we can get this thing back online you know the issue of fraud i would say clamp down hard on the fraudsters i've had the conversation internally with our membership and um, anybody who is involved in this is something that, you know, we, we want to name and shame and make examples of because it affects people who we care about. These are people who depend on these checks. For us, we could be talking about it right now uh, as, as something, but for them, this is bread and butter. This is their lifeblood. That is so, so, so correct. And I can imagine that if somebody doesn't have a bank account, and once the cash are checked at this time, they might well find, you know, themselves in a quandary. So I really hope that the issue yeah, can be resolved. So but final words right. before we go, Rajiv? Um, I absolutely agree with you, Natalie. I've had the conversation with the permanent secretary. I am all for naming and shaming those uh, miscreants of the supermarket business, as well as inside the ministry for because it, the, the fraud has to originate somewhere, Natalie. So, so we're all for trying to get the system right to work in the best interest of the people for whom the social welfare is intended. So um, with that, Natalie, thank you for having me on the show and look forward to you and Rokas taking it forward. Take care. All right. Thank you so much, Rajiv Dipti. Rajiv Dipti, their president of the Supermarket Association. And he says he does not agree that, you know, the supermarkets shouldn't be used to cash the checks but they have to heed the call of the ministry of social development and not cash social welfare checks for the time being because of the checks that were stolen and it, it's i think the value of it was eight million plus dollars so 
it's a lot of money. But for those people out there who don't have bank accounts, maybe now is a good time to look at getting in the system, I guess, so that you can move on with your lives. But we're going to take a break. Stick around. Lots more coming up. Not the friend of me, not the friend of me.